Dr. M. J. R. Educational and Research Institute, Faculty of Humanities and Science, Department of English, is organizing a seven-day online faculty development program on technology-enhanced language and literature teaching in higher education. I am very delightful to welcome you all for the third day faculty development program. Today, we have an eminent speaker, Dr. M. Lawrence, Associate Professor, American College, Madurai, delivering his speech on the topic, Virtual Presentation Skills for <coughs> Teaching English Literature Online. Welcome, sir. I consider it a great honor to invite Dr. Pushkala, ma'am, Dean, English in Charge Literary Seminary to deliver welcome address. Good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, on behalf of the Department of English, I wish to thank our Founder Chancellor through A.C. Shanmugam and our beloved President, Engineer A.C. Sarman Kumar, for providing us this wonderful opportunity to conduct a seven-day faculty development program. On behalf of the Department of English, I am immensely happy to welcome our resource person of the day, Dr. M. Lawrence, Associate Professor, Department of English, American College, Madurai. Hearty welcome, sir. Thank you. Hearty welcome to Dr. Chandrasena Rajeshwaran, Head of the Department of English, Dr. Mary Thomas, Dean, Department of English, members of the faculty from Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute in Deemed University, and also participants from other colleges and universities in the faculty development program. Today's topic is virtual presentation skills for teaching English literature online. Desperate times need desperate remedies. This pandemic has taught us to be resilient, explore new strategies in pedagogy, and exploit the possibilities of new technology, resulting in disruptive innovation concerning teaching and learning. Uh, what we think about is, uh, when we go deep into it, not that the use of technology is totally new to us in our classrooms. It has been increasingly popular in use over the past decade. What the pandemic has done is to accelerate the process. We all know that digital learning has become part of the academic learning and website links are incorporated in the syllabi for classroom activity and reference. E-texts are substituting print media. Now it is important that these products are integrated seamlessly with our core course structure and enhance the teaching and learning experience. All these days, we teachers have been trying to make students unlearn what they have learned when they join colleges. Now it seems to be the turn of the teachers to unlearn and relearn rapidly to make online teaching and learning efficacious. When we look at the advance in technology, a wide variety of creative techniques have emerged, like gamification tools, Kahoot, Olive, digital writing boards, and many others to simulate classroom teaching as much as possible. Breakaway groups or group discussions online offer the much needed peer learning experience. The most critical com component of online teaching and learning is connection, both technically and emotionally. To bring enthusiasm and transfer of energy, faculty need to strive to create an inclusive learning space in online as well. Let us get into the game, think positive, and show our students how we can master the four C's. Competence, conscience, commitment, and compassion in the teaching of literature online. In this session, we'll deep dive into the topic. We look forward to you, sir, to a highly valuable and informative sir, session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now it's time to call Ms. J. Jodi, Assistant Professor, Department of English, to introduce our Chief Guest, Dr. M. Lawrence, Associate Professor, American College, Madurai. Thank you, ma'am. I thank my department, HOD, 
and even coordinators for giving me this opportunity. I would like, I would feel great, great to introduce our chief guest, Dr. M. Lawrence, to the audience. Dr. M. Lawrence, attached with many universities, has his studied BA in St. Joseph's College, Trichy, MA in the American College, Madurai, MPhil in Pondicherry University, and PhD in Madurai Kamaraj University. He is specialized in South African literature and published research papers under South African literature. He started his career as a lecturer in English, Christ College, Bengaluru. And from 2007 to 2019, he was a president in PG English Literary Association. He is also a member in professional bodies. Co-authored with Dr. S. Vincent, he published 13 books. He also published two international journals and presented in six conferences. So far, he has given 34 lectures, talks and workshops. And now I am very proud to introduce our chief guest, Dr. Yam Lawrence to the FGP. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I cordially invite our chief guest, Dr. M. Lawrence, to today to take over the session. Thank you, A very good afternoon to one and all. Thank you, organizers, for having invited me for this program, uh, a one-week FDP program. I am very excited, delighted to uh, be with you all for presenting a module on virtual presentation skills <clears throat> for teaching literature. Right now, the time is uh, 2.12. We go on up to 3.15. 3.15 onwards, we can have a, a Q&A question and answer session. But if you want to share your views, you could go ahead and share, add on to what I am going to present. Very happy because uh, this is rightly pointed out by uh, previous uh, speakers, the need of the hour. All of us know how to go ahead, present in the classroom. But when it comes to uh, virtual, you really need to connect with the audience. And uh, my blueprint for you today is uh, as it is shown. I hope the screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. And uh, is my volume audible? Or should I raise my volume for more? Is my volume okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this is the blueprint. I will start with body language, voice, tech tips, word, PDF, PPT, video, interaction. These are all uh, the uh, virtual part of it and how we are going to implement all these uh, five aspects into our five uh, branches of uh, literature. So let me uh, begin my presentation with the first slide. The first thing that I got to do is uh, I need to look at the camera in virtual presentation. Do I look at the camera if it is a classroom presentation do I look at the students? Eye contact. You know, uh, uh, so many people have talked about uh, the power of eye, uh, eyes, eye communication. Uh, that is the first thing, according to science, the fastest uh, uh, sensory thing which travels is uh, light. So uh, the higher aspect of uh, 
catching the attention of another person is through light. And that happens through the eyes, the sensory perception through the eyes. First, let me look at the camera. Sometimes in your own place, wherever you have your uh, camera, the camera angle is very important. Right now, for example, if I close this grid, then uh, I have uh, a chance to see you all. And uh, when I go slightly to the side, I can see my presentation to the sides. I close. Slightly make it bigger. Okay. I'll go back. First, look at uh, the audience. Right now, the camera angle, if you're presenting through your mobile, camera angle is very important and you have to position your mobile and not keeping it on uh, the table, for example, or uh, someplace. You need to have a stand for uh, the video or camera or the uh, mobile camera. Uh, position it in such a way that it is uh, it captures you and your eye looking at the camera. If it is uh, a desktop, automatically the height will be a little okay. But if it is going to be a laptop, laptop camera angle, uh, you need to physically lift the laptop to the position where then when you look at the projection, you're also able to look at the camera straight. When you look at your projection, at, I mean, uh, at the PPT, whichever you're projecting to the audience, and the, your laptop screen, uh, often we tend to look down so that eyelids, you know, they also keep looking down. And when the eyelids look down, we give an appearance of closing our eyes. But when you look at the camera angle, eyes open up and you are able to cast. And through your eye communication, the audience, the participants, the candidates, they are able to catch the real nucleus, the DNA of what you're going to present. So eye contact is the first thing that we need to uh, use it in order to make uh, a contact or connect with the audience. And if it is a regular presentation, you must know your audience, you must know the room where you're going to present, and you know your subject and know yourself. With all these, it's very easy to walk into a classroom and then you become uh, the presentation. Whereas in virtual, extra care has to be taken so that you are able to look at the camera. I have given one picture where then you find over here your frame. <clears throat> sometimes your frame will look at the bottom. Sometimes your frame will look at uh, the side. And uh, uh, if you are able to keep your frame in such a way that people know you, watch you, and the presentation, both are equally important. Uh, in ultimate presentation, the presenter becomes the presentation itself. It's like uh, uh, when the dancer becomes the dance. That's the ultimate. You know, you have uh, uh, some kind of a self-transcendentalism. You're able to trans transcend yourself. You are getting. Get, you're able to get into the flow, creative energy, and you're part of it. It's not just part of it. You are it. You are the presentation for that your frame is extremely important and eye contact uh, tries to make that connect the bond with the audience and your facial expressions it has to be animated whatever you speak like you have uh, in the language text you talk about accent uh, your facial because in you know in a virtual presentation unlike when you have uh, a larger room, the camera is a bigger camera and a SLR camera, let's say, and you, you position it far away and you're able to capture your entire self, then your entire body is, is part of the presentation. But it is not so in virtual presentation for most of us. It is in our own houses, in our own rooms. I don't know, some of us may not have our own rooms. Some of us may not have podiums. Some of us may not have even kind of tables, the uh, height the position of the chair, so many things go into trying to bring about the animated face. And particularly in the afternoons, 
it's very, very uh, uh, difficult. <laughs> Afternoons, you must watch uh, the the candidates, you know, when they listen to uh, not even video is cast. It's only the voice. And remember, the brain processes the data 30,000 times faster when you, you show yourself, when uh, there is a visual going on. But most of the presentations, you find uh, the PowerPoint would go on and uh, uh, the voice will be heard. And where's the voice? <laughs> is it some kind of unheard melody? <laughs> Uh, it's not heard. That's very, very sorry. Most of the virtual classrooms, and when I come to the, the attention span, I have uh, an interesting find about uh, the attention of uh, the virtual participants throughout the world, whether it is India or whether it is California, it is all the same. Because virtual, global, www, it's all the same everywhere. So I have the face animated. Now you feel it's like, uh, let's not be, to use Julius Caesar, let's not be like Brutus. We all, you know, idea tanks and trying to come to the virtual medium and we try to offload all that. Then uh, it is of no use. We should be like Mark Antony, friends, friends, and countrymen. Uh, you know, every cell must be powered, uh, embedded with feelings. The emotions embedded in the words, emotive language, is what is needed in uh, to bring about animated face. And how do you bring about this animated face? Physical fitness, breathing mechanism, your confidence level, your bond with the audience, you gel with the audience. All these uh, are the ingredients of bringing about uh, a very good animated face. And this is a, a nice uh, factor when you talk about this. Uh, I have a presentation, let's see. Without knowing it, I did a webinar split test. Yesterday, I did a webinar and I was sitting down at my desk in a chair. Went well, engagement was great. I think I delivered pretty well as far as the content and getting people to engage, interact, provided the content in a valuable manner, handled the Q&A effectively. And then today I decided to use my stand-up desk and raise it and actually stand and give the presentation which is what I'm used to when I'm speaking at a conference. They don't normally put chairs on stage, especially if you're a keynote speaker or a breakout speaker, you don't have a chair to sit in. You're walking around with a lapel mic or maybe a handheld mic and you're standing, you're walking, you're talking. Or maybe there's a panel discussion and you're sitting in a chair like I did for the AMA a while back, which is a little bit different. It's a different format. A couple things I noticed. Uh, number one, I had more energy. Not like I need more energy, right? But if you know me, you know I have a lot of energy. But I had more energy, and I think I was more enthusiastic with the way I presented the content. And another thing is it really allowed me to focus on what I was doing, the talking, the providing value, rather than clicking, checking the slides, doing a whole bunch of different things. And if I did need to adapt to go over and look at, say, they go to webinar panel, which I was facilitating in the one today, which I was standing alone, I did need to check for comments, questions, just in case there were technical issues. I was just able to do that more fluidly, but I think I felt more comfortable. I felt more energetic and I felt like I gave the audience more value by being in a state of mind and in a physical form that I'm used to, which is standing and presenting, using gestures, maybe not so large gestures because of the camera, but I feel like I did the audience a better service by standing up and giving the presentation that was more effective because I did stand rather than sitting in a comfortable chair and just getting through the webinar, even though I felt like yesterday's was valuable. So let me come back to a sitting or standing presentation. 
when we sit and present, what happens is uh, the blood flow slows down. When you stand, the blood flow is a little high. So you are more in active mode. There are three modes. You have active mode, you have passive mode, and you have uh, the trans mode. If you're in active mode, you can give the best of yourself. And that happens only when you stand. But if you sit, your program sits. It, uh, it doesn't reach the audience. And the camera angle will be different when you sit unless you really have a high stool. And uh, it's a kind of partial standing and partial sitting wherein it's a blend of two and you're able to give quite a lot, like a lot of interactive presentations that you might watch on uh, TV shows, the talk shows, for example. So please make it a point to stand and present. You'll be surprised is uh, how to stand and have the uh, laptop. It'd be very difficult. Now, uh, uh, you can have the height with all the necessary resources that you have in your own house or in your office if you're presenting from your office. Sometimes uh, there are podiums in your, in your classroom, so actually you have the height. But podiums, when you keep uh, the laptop on the podium and there's, it is a height adjustable kind of podium, you will not be able to give uh, the bust of uh, you, you know, well, for the camera. But instead, uh, you'll be giving only part of your chin or part of uh, your face. If you want to have uh, the entire from head to your chest, that is the kind of professional uh, uh, virtual presentation uh, view, if you're able to give that, then you need to stand and position it in such a height. Right now, I'm presenting from uh, my home to share with you. And what I have got is uh, a stand and over it, I have kept the table mitt. And I got the right kind of height so that uh, it could capture most of my, the, the entire face and part of my upper body. And uh, this gives me a chance to, for the audience uh, to see the, so on. So please make it a point to, to stand and present. Otherwise, particularly for the afternoon sessions, it's uh, so bad. You know, we might, uh, uh, our session might be a lullaby. La la, la la, la la. <laughs> and people might go up to sleep. So for active, dynamic, magnetic presentation, make it a point to stand. Now, even the use of your gestures, the hands, like what you saw in the YouTube presentation, it's not like uh, you have uh, your hands going up, but at least uh, your hand expressions up to the ears or up to the nose, that is possible. <clears throat> have it uh, minimal. But uh, if you want to have, when you stand, even your voice will become better. You know, your body goes into the voice, the visual and uh, the audio that makes it uh, a complete uh, part of you in the presentation. Next thing is uh, sometimes you might find some of the TV personalities uh, uh, pointing fingers at the audience uh, when they come. Please do not use the index finger because everybody has got uh, a mobile or a, a, a laptop or a desktop which is at close quarters, you know, probably about uh, two feet away, three feet away. And straight away, when you point finger like this, uh, it's like a 3D effect, the lucky charge, virtual lucky charge happening if you use your index finger to point at the audience as you see in uh, the slide, index. Please do not use index. And do not look away. Sometimes uh, people might come in front of you, wave to you, talk to you, or uh, want to communicate something. So your eyes might go to the side and that side. No, but look at the camera constantly. Well, the moment you take away uh, your eyes off the camera, you are somewhere else. So avoid uh, trying to uh, look away. 
And when you sit down, you have this particular danger of uh, this man. You see, you're having headphones and then locking uh, the finger lock and trying to support his uh, chin. Well, this, it's, it's almost like in body language, what we, this we call it as a body auto contact, closing up of, uh, it's not like I'm ready for presentation, I'm going to close my presentation. And that is a, a withdrawal symptom during presentation. Please avoid the uh, clasping of hands. Let your hands be free. Because any time you might be using your hands for presentations. And now and then, uh, you, know, you will be having a lot of jokes and uh, you smile. And the smile uh, actually disarms people. Even if people are defensive, when you smile, the people will smile back. Uh, that is a very interesting one. The next, you talk about uh, nodding, or uh, 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 be mobile, move about. Now you might have seen uh, people who come here for various programs in uh, on uh, TV shows. They tend to uh, nod their heads. But what happens in a webinar? People keep their face very straight, stiff. It's as if uh, uh, George. Orwell's uh, 1984, Winston room one-on-one, so where then uh, the face is fixed in nine frame and the rats are uh, let loose and they come and they try to do that. It's like that they're fixed in frames. They don't move their heads. It's like an NCC commander uh, telling the president, attention, and freeze. <laughs> the face freezes. No movement, my God. That will be a dead presentation. Please have your nods move about to give some variety. Those of you who would have had some uh, studies or papers in uh, educational psychology, they talk about uh, providing stimulus variation. When the stimulus is uh, constant, the same, repetitive, people go away from you. But when you add variety of stimuli uh, through your body language through slides then people are glued to your presentation and that is the power of uh, mobile being mobile going about not static presentation now you find uh, there are people who are statue presenters in presentation styles one presentation style is called statue presentation and this presentation is like a statue like a rock of Gibraltar. They do not move. So many uh, centuries have gone, but I do not move. Uh, that's a kind of firm rootedness some people have, and uh, that's negative. But if you know that you are mobile and uh, you are very flexible. Yeah. So that's uh, the first one. Uh, this is the first part of uh, my presentation, body language. According to communication theories, 55% of your communication is allotted to body language. That's why I took it up first. You are making a visual statement with your body. So that is about 55%. People look at you and then decide whether you are worth listening to. So please make it a point to have all these and uh, if you sit down, definitely it's very difficult for you to have an erect posture. But if you stand, you are able to have an erect uh, posture. At the base of the spine, there should be an arch, what you call the lumbar region, the last of five uh, vertebrae. Just above that, there should be a curve. If there is a curve at the base of the spine, just uh, on the thrust forward, and shoulders drawn backwards, then you're able to have the erect posture. And the posture uh, will actually indicate your level of confidence. If you're confident, your posture will be good. If you're not confident, your posture will not be good. Right now, I'm in my house, in one of my, my rooms, and I'm wearing shoes inside the house. You might be wondering why should I wear shoes? If I wear, if I wear shoes, if I'm dressed as I'm presenting before the 
a live audience right in front of me, face-to-face -face presentation, what I would be the same I am today. Only then, uh, all these body language points will be uh, transferred to the voice and the presentation the vibes, the energy level, and so on. We move on to the second one. First, the visual, and now the audio part. You must know how to play with your voice. You know, all of us all have been teaching literature or learning literature at some point of time or the other. Now, haven't we tried to uh, imitate others' voices? You can't say, uh, I, I don't, I'm not a mimicry artist. No, you don't have to be that. But uh, certain things with the voice you can play. For example, uh, my last Duchess, you say, I gave commands and all smiles stopped. It's very icy kind of pitch. Or you take uh, Macbeth, the beginning of the opening scene of Macbeth. I shall be meet in lightning on thunder. <laughs> to play with your voice. I'm not telling that everybody can change your voice, but uh, if you love what you do, definitely you'll be able to play with your voice. When you have little children come to your house, to your families, don't you change your voices? Hey, little one, don't you change? There is a mobility in the voice. And can't we transfer that mobility even in the classroom, virtual classroom? Rather than a very staged kind of a delivery, the voice is a boring, buh, 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 like that. If it is a man who's 40 years old, 40 plus, well, I'm 53 plus, I have the danger of my voice being uh, throaty if I do not uh, constantly give practice to my voice, breath mechanism, breath dynamics, and so many other things are involved to play with your voice. Which, particularly in the afternoon virtual classroom sessions, your pitch must be high. If you're going to have your pitch a little low, long, long ago, once upon a time, <laughs> the speed is very slow then uh, the, uh, the pictures went low. What will happen to the audience? The audience also will slowly say, bye, bye, bye. They'll go away from your presentation. The pitch, have it uh, not very high, too high all the time, but uh, a little high in order to bring the audience into your grip, have them under your spell. Uh, let's say one example for a pitch. When you want to uh, really, uh, let's say an NCC commander is speaking, when he says the word fire, the pitch, how would you say the word fire? And he would say fire! And uh, goes up. So you have to have the breath mechanism uh, first to puff up your chest and then fire! It comes from uh, the the diaphragm, the bottommost uh, resonating chambers. From there, when it comes with the chest power, you have the desired effect. For example, you are giving a demo, Julius is a more Cantonese speech. You cannot say, friends, Romans, and countrymen, let me hear uh, yes. <laughs> if you say like that, it's as flat. Uh, it's like probably Lepidus has not made any presentations in Julius Caesar. But it'll be like Lepidus was powerless among the tramways that you come across in Julius Caesar's play. If Mark Anthony comes and speaks, now the crowd is going out after listening to Brutus. Oh, let him be Caesar! And that's what they talk. And they go, they go away. And Mark Anthony first has to catch the attention of the people, so he has to shout, "Friends!" And somebody's calling, and they would come. So that is the kind of pitch. Uh, emotive language. You know, pitch is uh, something which is again an indicator of your confidence. If you know how to play with the pitch, then you are in the creative flow of demonstration of whatever you want to uh, 
uh, impart to the audience. And as we have learned, the tone, rising tone, falling tone, which we have uh, learned in our linguistics, I'm not going to that. Volume. Let it be, let the volume be quite okay. If it is too high, people will feel, uh, uh, they'll feel terribly odd listening to us. But if the volume is low, people will go away from the presentation. So please make sure that your presentation volume is quite okay. That's why in the beginning itself, you know, you have to strike a deal with the audience, checking with them whether the volume is okay or not. If not, please uh, give me feedback. And uh, the fifth point, resonating chambers. Your voice can resonate in various chambers. I'll give you a demo. Let's say uh, I am going down in the water. I do not know swimming and you all know swimming. So one of you will save me as I'm sinking. Maybe you also can, uh, one of you can have uh, the video on those of those people that I can see. Uh, Priya Darshini, can you have your video on? Priya Darshini? Hello? I can see Priya Darshini. Yes. Oh, thank you what do you do right now? Just, just a minute, sir. Okay. All the other participants also, please uh, do as I ask you. I think Priya Dashni is feeling shy. Uh, uh, Thomas, Mary, Thomas, ma'am, uh, can you can you give me company demo? Can you unmute and speak? Mary Thomas? Yes, tell oh. me, uh, tell oh. me, Robin. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, please keep your hands, uh, your right hand palm on your head. On my head, okay. Uh, and please uh, uh, repeat after me. Help. Help. I... Help, help, the word help. Yeah. Okay, okay, help. I'm, I'm help. So you and I are thinking in the water, okay? And they are asking for help. One okay, of the okay. Okay, so I'm saying, help, help. No, 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 help. No, 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 no. Okay, exactly. I'm thinking in the water, right? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. But please mm. repeat exactly as I deliver. Oh, I do say. Okay, okay. Mm. Help. Help. Will anybody help? Maybe I don't think anyone will help. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, please uh, hold your nostrils. Okay. Help. Help. Will anybody help? help? Oh, yeah. I don't see anyone with you. No, no, no. Okay, now from your mouth. Mm. Yeah, it has to come from your Help. Help. No, no, it's coming from lower chambers. It should come only from your mouth. Only from help. Mouth. Yeah, help. Only from mouth. Will anybody help? I don't think so. No. Keep your hands on your throat. Mm. Help. Help. Will anybody help? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Okay, from your chest. Help. Help. Will anybody help? Hand. I think they will. No, I think no. they will. Now you can put your hand in your abdomen. Okay. And then uh, really the cry of hell. Help. 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 Uh, that has emergency. Okay. okay. Thank you. So now, yeah. then, uh, these are the resonating chambers. It comes from the right. head, uh, nose, uh, mouth, throat, uh, chest, and then... Yeah, we learn it in, uh, for, uh, when, we, when, uh, when we have, you know, the voice training also. Yeah, yeah. So, singing. When we have the voice training for singing, we have oh. to hold our uh, chest and stomach and we have to uh, sing, you know, the scales from door to... Do re mi fa. Do re mi fa su la ti do. Otherwise, why do you need to do that? That's great. Thank you, Mary Thomas, for all uh, 
uh, being a sport and then uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That point. that's excellent so what i gave you was uh, different resonating chambers the release the voice being released from different resonating chambers and according to the situation required resonance can be supplied so you have various kinds of release of the voice not the same voice throughout and uh, that you can go ahead and do it so that's uh, these are the five things dealing with this part of it and let's go to the left side delivery style now how you deliver your presentation uh, when you have a mobile presentation with nodding of the head, with smiles, active, dynamic, versatile, multifaceted, then uh, you, know, you provide a lot of variety loaded in your presentation. And definitely the audience would feel glued to your presentation. But invariably, in many conferences, virtual conferences, and so sorry to say that, that the voice happens to be if there are 10 speakers uh, at least uh, seven speakers would be monotonous there's no variety in the tonal variation same voice alpha omega the beginning end the same graph 180 degree <laughs> if you are going to have a graphic representation of your voice and it should have going up and down, up and down, up and down. When you have a sound recorder, uh, when you record your voice, that will give you graphic representation of your voice. And that is a very good help to check whether your voice is a dynamic or a monotonous. Please check. The uh, stentorian voice is a dangerous voice. Particularly men are prone to it. But I, I don't know whether the uh, uh, academic presenters would have uh, this defect, stentorian voice. Sometimes you find uh, the politicians, when they speak, they speak in a very high volume. And that high volume uh, uh, really would uh, tear off people's uh, eardrums. And that is stentorian voice. Too bass and too loud. Let's not get into that. And let's not have uh, a flat and boring voice. Instead, a dynamic voice, which we had by a lot of uh, examples. If you love what you do, automatically your energy level will be very high fall in love with the subject of your presentation automatically energy level will be high have that constant energy right from the beginning till the end then you will be, your presentation will be very good some tech tips first i talked about this uh, camera angle already so i will uh, skip that particular part and please see to it that there is enough light on your face now uh, if there is no light on your face then uh, people cannot see you cannot see your face very clearly if uh, sometimes there are uh, special lights these days it is available in amazon.com you can get those lights or if nothing you position your your laptop in such a way that you have a light or you have a table lamp in front of you table lamp earlier we used to use it for studies when we were students but now you can use it for presentation as well like uh, uh i i was an actor playing roles in drama when i was a student and i was a director also of the drama for some time so you position lights, you know, the footlights and the spotlights, the strobe lights and various kinds of uh, lights that you have. Now all these lights will have light on you, spotlight on you. And uh, that will uh, really bring about uh, your facial clarity and your facial expressions. And that is being projected to the audience. Check your phone, your microphone whether your laptop phone is uh, the mic is uh, working all right. Sometimes it may, it may not. If that is the case, then you please get an additional mic and attach it. Reduce distortion. Right now in my room, I have closed all the doors. 
but uh, it's not a soundproof room. But as far as possible, I have tried to reduce the sound from outside. I have not switched on the fan too. Otherwise, you'll have the drone. Of, I often call this fan as in uh, electrical or technological lullaby. And that particular sound will drive people to sleep. And it's a distortion. So as far as possible, try to reduce distortion. While playing YouTube videos, right now I'm not using uh, uh, headphones at all because my laptop is an Apple uh, MacBook Air and uh, the mic is good and uh, I'm used to it. So it goes on without it. But for some of us who have uh, the headphones, when you play YouTube short videos, please uh, uh, keep it, uh, uh, remove the pin and play it. Then the audio will be heard uh, very easily. And as far as possible while playing uh, uh, video, there's a separate section for it. I'll come to it later. But uh, YouTube, no headphones. And I don't know. <laughs> These days, like uh, people changing the background in their, on their mobile or in their laptops, people often try to change the uh, virtual background. Uh, in the beginning, it was available in uh, Zoom software. Google did not have it. And now Google also has incorporated. So whether you have uh, Zoom or Google, in both you have virtual backgrounds. But choose virtual backgrounds in such a way that uh, your person is seen properly. In certain backgrounds, uh, it will not be oh, okay. Actually, I would prefer not to have a virtual background. I would like to have uh, my own wall at the back. But in case if you're not in your house and you're in your office and the background has uh, got a lot of disturbances and uh, it's a uh, visual you know, garish, then uh, you need to go in for the available virtual backgrounds and choose a virtual background, which will uh, give a, a pleasant uh, feast to the eyes. And in case if you have another person to assist you, uh, a, a choose a co-host to assist you to take care of uh, the uh, the chat, raising of the hand. Now that's a parallel in computer. You call it as a parallel programming. While presenting, it's difficult to maintain the presentation and the audience uh, grid, and then the chat, and then. Uh, the raising of the hand and so on. So, so it's better when you go in for a larger group of presentations. Uh, I think so far in my presentation, the largest presentation that I've had on Zoom is uh, about uh, 393 participants. And that is there it's very difficult you know, to, to interact with uh, everybody, to keep a watch, everybody watching everybody. It's difficult. So there, assistance is needed. A co-host who knows about technology can sit with you or stand with you and present. And convert all your presentations, whether it is PPT or whatever, try to make it into, uh, P try to convert PPT into PDF. Now, when you have it in the PDF, you have a full play option. Still, you can reduce it to size and uh, the side, uh, uh, the, the pointers, those things can be uh, removed. So that is what I usually do. So these are the four formats that we might be using for virtual presentation. The first one is a word. Background color, have it dark. For example, if you look at this particular slide, the background of that uh, square, rounded square box, it is blue color and the font is uh, white color. So it has uh, contrast. And uh, this blue is little bright blue, unlike uh, certain blues, which are uh, very dull. This is quite an okay blue and uh, pink and blue, you know, they gel. So the color combination. I have used uh, pink color for the titles and uh, the sub points I've used uh, white color. But the font size, keep it at least 25. When you keep the font size 25, it's visible. Imagine a person uh, 
uh, watching your entire presentation on a mobile. Mobile the phone size, let's say it's a 10 or 12. And it's, it's very, very uh, difficult for us uh, to watch what is going on. So please keep it at 25. And uh, the page, the zooming of the page, please keep it as 150%. Uh, I will just give you a demo. This will come for portrait. So this is uh, 193 zoom. I'm going to keep it as 125. Then I can maximize so that I have, what is this? Okay. So this is readable. So your page can be converted uh, like this. And you could have uh, uh, pictures inserted as you find in Go what an aggression urn. I've inserted some uh, pictures there. Now, uh, the brain processes information 13,000 times faster. And you compare uh, to a data which is being supplied through the audio form and through the video form, visual form 30,000 times faster. And uh, in the visual presentation, if uh, the visual is uh, arresting, then you have the brain's uh, top function 30,000 times speed. But uh, if it is going to be a dead presentation, like a word becoming flesh, word really like we find uh, uh, speech act theory, or uh, the performative when you perform your word should perform how does it perform when you have some pictures inserted by the side then word pictures you know it's very easy for the student to connect sometimes the student is not able to understand the word but the pictures are self-explanatory it speaks sometimes more than words pictures would be wonderful when you prepare your own word but sometimes uh, preparing powerpoint will consume a lot of time. You know, I started my PowerPoint presentation way back 20 years ago in 2000. And uh, for one presentation, I used to spend uh, 30 hours, 40 hours uh, in just preparing the PowerPoint. It's like, you know, when you do research, you do a lot of uh, hunt for the material and uh, collect the material. And then you organize the material, you classify the material and then you begin to write. So like that for presentation also, you have to collect material, you organize, you classify, and then uh, in a rough points are uh, ready. But once the points are ready to take it and put it in the PowerPoint, it consumes a lot of time. And uh, we have a lot of uh, subjects to teach, and we may not have time for all, for every poem on PowerPoint, for every novel, uh, so many themes for collecting every theme on PowerPoint, it's a time consuming job. But if you are able to do it in the word itself, it's fine. The message should reach the audience, my students. So that's a part, insert pictures. If you are using PDF, you can uh, highlight, you can add uh, notes. Then you go click, and then it will have an option add note, and uh, you can type in. For example, for some of the poems, if it is already there in the PDF and you don't have time to convert it into Word, then in the PDF itself, you can highlight the colors and then uh, you can also add uh, notes, uh, allusions, difficult words, meanings you can insert, all that you can do. And 50 to 60%, 50%, right now, if you look at my screen projection in my laptop, about 60% is the presentation. It's the PDF. What I have is PDF. I worked on PowerPoint to convert PowerPoint into PDF for easy mobility for me. And uh, so that the rest, I can have the grid view. I can see part of uh, the audience. PPT, every slide, just keep one point. For example, uh, uh, this one focuses on uh, four sub-ideas, but all about uh, how to present the material. P 
PPT, one idea, concept, slide. Font size of uh, the letters, please keep it at least 24. Sometimes when you reduce it to small size, you have about 15 to 20 lines. Uh, some people have it to an entire paragraph. Just to put it there, are software is now available. Convert uh, a word into PowerPoint. So one page becomes a, one slide of PowerPoint. Such easy transition is available on the net. But the readability goes down. So please make it 24 point, 24 size. Background color contrast you have. Sometimes you can have pictures or photos, chart, uh, back chart, map. You can also play background music, instrumental music. You can play uh, for interactions. You can play music. I will play music during interaction time. And if you're playing video, instead of going into uh, uh, closing this and opening uh, the already saved files, uh, and then uh, coming back to it, it consumes time. Instead, you can have the link address in, inserted in your PowerPoint or Word or PDF, and uh, make it a point to press the Enter button so that the uh, underline is there. Once it's underlined, it becomes uh, an address. And this link address will directly take you to the YouTube presentation. Or if you have something in your Google Drive and it has an address, you can just press it and it automatically uh, opens that particular file for you. It's a time saver. If you have a larger chunk of video, it doesn't consume uh, space on your computer too. In Google Space also, uh, Google Drive Space also, they have only so much of GB. So you uh, you have your own uh, reservations about uh, space. So link address could uh, ease to could provide you with ease. Download a YouTube address you can have. No headphone, headphones come mic uh, during the video presentation. Please remove it and check volume during presentation. If it's going to be a longer video, people will lose uh, your presentation. They would go off to uh, what is uh, shown elsewhere and they will forget about uh, you or the presentation. It will be uh, too much of a distraction. So two to three minutes video, short videos, more than enough. <clears throat> Interaction. I was really shocked when I was surfing and I found this. Look at the two graphs. Um, I think I'll, for this alone, I will make it uh, bigger so that uh, you are able to see it very clearly. You see the average audience attention? First to 10 minutes, they are with you. After that, they disappear. And then they come back towards the last 10 minutes. So the program is going to end. So that we come back. That is how they, they go about. And if you have this interaction throughout the presentation, then probably uh, you can have in your classroom, when you actually teach, you can have a lot of interactions. I had uh, one or two interactions with uh, uh, Mary Thomas and Priya Dashni too. And in the beginning, asking for volume, so three or four kinds of interactions. But what we are advised is every seventh minute in your virtual classroom presentation, please uh, have some interaction. It's the last point that you have. Recapture attention every seventh minute. Because one, one, one look is seven minutes. After that, the audience go away. If you do not provide a break, uh, a visual or a stimulus uh, variation, they go away from you. You must show the slide or you must talk something else. Only then they will be with you. Uh, otherwise, they, they are gone. Sometimes you can ask someone to speak. For example, it so accidentally happened. Mary Thomas was talking about uh, the voice uh, training and uh, singing, vocal training, and she was sharing how she went about. So she did the part of guest speaker role, and I invited her to, to be uh, a volunteer for the demonstration. <laughs> Sanjay Day is uh, providing us uh, with a comic relief by playing music <laughs> now. Okay, so all these are part of uh, the presentation. You incorporate everything 
everything into whatever happens. Now, every stimulus available during a presentation, you can make it part of your presentation. Your speaker, ask questions to the group. Generally, you can ask so anybody who would open up, people who are ready. Uh, sometimes you can ask a specific person, like how I did. Uh, I asked, requested Priya Dashni to uh, come on video so that we could go ahead with some presentation of uh, a demo. But she was not ready, and immediately Mary Thomas uh, uh, joined, and that was nice. Uh, a lot of time for questions and answers, and we have a lot of time for that at 3.15. I have 10 more minutes uh, to present. You can conduct a poll. I think uh, day one, uh, Kathy King, Dr. Kathy King was uh, uh, making a reference to uh, one software available for conducting a uh, poll. It starts with M. You can have survey questions like in chat. It's very difficult to have a verbal blah, 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 and then also to have a written blah, blah, blah simultaneously. It's very difficult and that we do not uh, have uh, multitasking during presentations, very difficult. So as a result of uh, that multitasking difficulty, please have a co-host to take care of the chat. Otherwise, it's difficult for you to concentrate on both. You can use music during questions. Whiteboard also can be used for the brainstorming. You know, when you go here and uh, I think when you make it big, the whiteboard option will be there. Here, when you go, there's an option called uh, whiteboard. When you go for this whiteboard, uh, you say start a new board and then uh, it opens up. and uh, you can get share and you can use this for uh, brain uh, storming this one and you go up other options will be there down you'll have a sticky note and when you press a sticky note you can go ahead and use it otherwise even you just have a simple That may not be a problem. Yeah. Uh, the use of the whiteboard. And so that you can use just a word file. That's enough. The exercises you can give, challenges you can give. Sometimes you can conduct uh, games, a quiz, uh, games like uh, uh, charades you can conduct. Or you can ask people to share their stories, personal stories, virtual, how it was. All these would add uh, spies to your presentation. Now we come to teaching of poetry. For this, uh, I have uh, Robert Frost, and before that, what in the Grecian urn, which I think I showed you some time back. One minute, I think uh, I should again go for present now, otherwise it will not be visible since uh, it got cut off. Back again. Okay, there we are. I've chosen this particular poem and uh, let's see how uh, I have done teaching of uh, poetry. Well, I think I'll make it big. Maybe people may not be aware of the concept of where some students who come from rural folk, they might be used to only the mud part in which the ashes are kept. So they don't know the concept of urn. So if you are able to show them the picture of the urn, they go, oh, okay, I understand. Okay, this is the urn. Okay. 
And if you see one stanza of you know, quietness and uh, express, they rhyme, time and rhyme, they rhyme. So I have chosen colors for the, the rhyming words, A, B, A, B, C, D, uh, C, D, and uh, C, E, you know, shape and escape and arcade and ecstasy kind of uh, half rhymes, uh, shape and escape. So that will also give them difficult words I have given within brackets, so they don't have to go to the glossary all the time. So within the particular page, everything is uh, visible. So this kind of your own original preparation of uh, the poem uh, can be given in uh, your virtual uh, presentation. Or if you want to add some more spice to your presentation, let's say wrote not taken. Uh, uh, this is uh, Robert Frost himself uh, speaking. For just $67, you can make as many videos as you want, and you never need to pick up a camera or use any fan. Just in a yellow wood. I'm sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was. Okay, I'm just showing you samples. Well, it, it has the entire poem. People will be introduced to Frost. They will also know uh, who is Frost, how Frost is, how Frost looks like, and they also get a chance to hear his own voice. But sometimes this is only audio and the picture of Frost, it may not be, the students may not be able to catch. So if you want to have a picturesque one, there's another presentation. his own uh, making and the other one uh, where the picture is uh, self-explanatory and people get to know okay this is weird and they get the real picture people are not able to stretch their uh, imagination fantasize that's what poetry is supposed to do since some people are not capable of uh, we are providing the visual so that they can see these methods can be used for teaching poetry for drama i have taken uh, shakespeare's uh, hamlet to show you and uh, I teach Hamlet and uh, this is how uh, I teach Hamlet for my MA students. I download uh, the play and uh, I have my own markings like this. This is the, the solid K okay, which I thought I will share with you. I'm going to reduce the size. and then maximize and i will play the video you have richard burton's uh, hamlet but people with the present generation will feel distant from richard burton's so what i have chosen is mel uh, gibson he's a very famous australian hollywood actor his delivery of uh, to be or not to be Fortune. 
They can uh, or to take arms against the sea of trouble. Decide. And by opposing, end them to die. who might not have seen Peria, you can just uh, highlight the picture and rationalism, I've chosen a brain's uh, picture. And uh, the concept was I had used colors, font size again, make it big for visibility. Uh, the blues and that, you see, this is uh, what Peria would uh, criticize. And uh, the positive ones, I had used uh, pink color, red ones, I have used for Piria's criticism. The whole thing was the entire piece. I just made it for highlight. This one. You can split up. They say not continuous one. You can break it up, break it up into various points. Then uh, fiction. Then again, uh, movies. Uh, what I have done within the same slide. These days, people do not read. They do not know how the book appears. So I have got Danita Desai's in, in custody book. And I've just roughly given the character mapping over here. And Devin, the main character, Sala, Imitias, Begum, the old lady, the female characters over here. And uh, Nur, the uh, Urdu poet, uh, the legend, and Murad, and Siddiqui, Sahir, and this HOD. So all these uh, major characters I have portrayed. and. Uh, Maybe you can encourage them to go give the link. There's a movie uh, from the Kapoor uh, family that uh, somebody had uh, acted. You can just, uh, this is the entire movie which is available on. Uh, this is Urdu. So, Okay. And uh, theory part, I have deliberately left it because uh, another co-presenter is, uh, another resource person is presenting on theory, how to teach literary criticism. So I don't want to barge into his area and I will uh, uh, close now. And right now, we will go for the question and uh, answer session. Thank you so much, sir. We are moving to Q&A session. Uh, sir, there is a question in the chat box from Dr. R. Pushkala, ma'am. Well, um, yes, sir. Uh, ah, yes, sir. One, uh, she has said it's a wonderful presentation. Aren't voice modulation and body language equally important in offline classes in teaching and experiencing literature? Of course, ma'am. Whether it is uh, offline or online, it is uh, equally necessary. Your classroom discipline classroom management will be very easy if you have a powerful body language, uh, empathic body language. And the same thing, 
is all the more necessary in virtual. You are giving, uh, let's say, your body language about uh, forty percent in the classroom. In virtual presentation, it is more needed because uh, most of the virtual presentations are flat. That is why there is a greater emergency for us to include body language in uh, the choice of body language. The part of body language. You hear so you know, even your elbow is not maybe your forearm till here. You hear your finger movement, your head, your eye, your face, and your chest. You must be able to project it for getting uh, positive attention from uh, your. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I just want to say I really en enjoyed your presentation. It was a very interactive and very interesting one, and I think, uh, learned many points and can also adapt and adopt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, there is another question from Chitra Praveen, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, need of the hour presentation, sir. What makes the difference between audible and stentorian, sir? A stentorian is politician's voice. If I give you a uh, an example from Tamil. I'm a Tamilian, so uh, the politicians, how they speak, you can say, This is stentorian voice. <laughs> People get scared of this voice. <laughs> you don't need to use that. Any more questions? Recording um, voice volume will be very high, pitch will be very high, speed will be very high, energy will be too much, but uh, the audience cannot take it for a very long time. You can use it as a shock film in the speech. Yes, please. Any questions? Yes. Yes, you have some more minutes. I hope. Uh, I, I hope there is no need, there is no questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome, ma'am. This one, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ah, thank yes. you. Okay, sir. We'll continue. Thank you, sir, for your fabulous presentation. Uh, today we learned how to present and interact with the students through virtual presentation skills. You have given more tips, um, most probably technical tips, voice modulation, volume of the pitch, delivery style, body language, and how to interact with the students in virtual presentation skills. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Now it's time to deliver the vote of thanks. I would like to call Ms. Jodi, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Dr. MJR University, to propose vote of thanks. Thank you. It's an honor to offer a vote of thanks in this faculty development program. I would like to thank Dr. M. Lawrence Sir for sharing the importance of body language, voice modulation in virtual presentation. Thanks for that, sir. I also thank Dr. Pushkala Ramani, Madam, Dean Dr. Mayuri Thomas, our HOD Dr. Chandrasena Rajeshwaran, event coordinators and other faculty members. Last but not least, I thank all of them who joined with us in the meeting. Thank you.
Thank you, ma'am. Participants, uh, kindly fill the feedback and attendance form which has been posted in chat box. Yeah? And, and there is another information. Uh, FDP participants have to attend all, uh, at least minimum of five days to get your certificates. So kindly attend at least seven, uh, out of seven sessions, attend five sessions to get your certificates. Uh, the feedback link is being posted in the chat box. Kindly fill in the feedback form. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Bishop Priya, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Thank Participants, you. you can also watch our YouTube live streaming in our YouTube channel. I once again thank all the participants who took active part in the faculty development program. I also remind you to use the same GMIT link to, uh, for tomorrow's FDP. For all the seven days, same link. So you can use the same link to get into the sessions. And you can also watch our, uh, you know, programs on YouTube, which is uh, simultaneously streamed on YouTube also, live. 